Hey there designers, I uh, thought I'd bring you a quick video on how to use some slicing software in order to do the final preparations for getting your 3D print going on your 3D printer. Um, I've got Cura here is the slicing engine and I've been using our uh, robo printers in our print lab. We just got those this summer and they're, they're fun to work with. Um, so in Cura, the slicing engine, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna bring in an STL. What slicing engines do is they convert uh, your STL files into G code files. G code files are what's read by the 3D printer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click open file here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a marker holder uh, that we've been working on for some of our moving whiteboards on campus. So you'll notice in that right hand corner right there, it really quick sliced the, uh, the file. And what slicing means is it takes our file and it breaks it down into individual layers that are then going to be printed using the filament that's in your 3D printer. Um, same as in, uh, in any drafting software, right click can help us um, orbit around and rotate around our views on the object. I'm going to use the scroll wheel and shift to get us in a little closer here. And you can see there's our object that we're going to print and we're going to give it a spin around. I always encourage you to take a quick look. Uh, full 360 at anything you're going to be printing to make sure everything looks good, it looks according to your specifications, and also looks like it's aligned to the print bed. Now let's go over some features in Cura. Um, one thing I noticed right away when I started using Cura, if I right click on this, I get some different options here, like to center the model on the platform. I can multiply the model, like create multiple copies like that if I wanted to. Um, Reslices it, changes it. I'm going to go ahead and delete that though. Uh, what else can we do here? We can clear the build plate, we can reload models, we can reset a lot of different things just by right clicking on the object. Um, other things you can do once you click on an object here, we can scale the object. That's a big deal if you need to change a scale and make something 110% or 150% of its original scale or reduce it. Uh, you can rotate the object. Um, I love that it's got a lay flat feature. That's pretty awesome. If you have any parts of your print that are slightly elevated, there it's going to result in printing spaghetti. So being able to make sure that your um, your object is laid flat, um, and you can reset back to our original orientation here. Uh, clicking back on that object here, we can also mirror it on different axes. So I can create a mirror image of that object. Sometimes you could copy something and then create a mirror image. That might be a handy thing to do when you're fabricating something. Notice the z-axis doesn't have any effect on this object, um, nor does the y-axis, but that x-axis flip might be useful. Um, other settings that you can do in Cura, let's see, we can do a view mode. So I can check this out as an x-ray so I can see internal components if I want to. I can actually take a look at all of the different layers and I can color them differently so that I can go through and study the object closely. So here, if I move this slider, I can see how this print is gonna be fabricated one layer at a time. That's really neat for being able to study any problems that might come up when you're trying to produce or create a print to see if there is an issue with the design. Uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, solid here. Then over on the right hand side here, what's neat in Cura is there are some preset profiles that you can use. Um, so low quality is going to cause you to have thicker layers. If you need to just get out a quick prototype, that could be great. Uh, thick layers and less infill. Uh, normal quality is your standard. High quality causes the machine to go much slower. Um, it fills it more, gives you thicker walls. Um, and you'll notice here, if I change my quality settings, low quality, on this print, hour and 33 minutes, high quality is gonna take me, look down here, three hours and 22 minutes. So it can make a significant difference in terms of your print time, changing the quality of your print. So you'll have to think about what you're using. Um, under material, we primarily print in PLA, but you can see there's different pre-slug profiles for all of these different print materials if you're printing in any type of exotic filaments. Um, and then under infill here, I can change this object to make it completely hollow. Um, and it kind of gives me a note here, hey, that comes at the cost of strength, but sometimes you want a hollow object. Um, I can have light infill. Uh, we can change the density using these different pre slug buttons. And I really like the visual that comes with those. Um, support is something you need to consider. Uh, if you have any overhangs on your object that are greater than 45 degrees, typically you're gonna need to enable support. So I can enable support um, or I can disable it. 
And then build plate adhesion is another thing for creating a raft if you're having trouble with adhesion um, or if you have parts that are really narrow, you're gonna wanna make sure that you use build plate adhesion. I tend to use it because it takes care of a whole lot of issues that come up with printing. So I've got that selected. Um, those are the basic features that you're gonna see. Now you can get really um, uh, detailed with this by clicking on custom and you can change all kinds of different settings, but those are for later instructional models and, and videos to, as you start working with it more. Um, I, if you're a beginning user, I would stick with the recommended settings um, and the pre-slugged profiles here. Anyway, once you're ready to go and you're ready to print, you're either gonna wanna just click print if your slicing engine is connected directly to your printer. Uh, on this computer, it's not, so you would need to save your G code to file. And we just say save to file here and notice it's gonna save a G code. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on the desktop and say save. And then I can go and grab that G code file throw it onto a thumb drive or an SD card or whatever it is that's going to interface with my 3D printer. And that's going to be the file that I'm going to actually physically take over to the 3D printer and load into the 3D printer in order to get this marker holder created. So anyway, um, I hope these settings are helpful for you. It's kind of nice to have a quick tour of the Cura interface, and I thought a video format would be a good way to do that. Um, if you like what you see, be sure to take a look at my other videos that are posted in my 3D printing playlist. And thanks for watching.